Good evening, everyone. My name is Paige Disler, and I'm an MFA intern. I'll be your co-host for tonight's We'll Talk with Artists. Our digital discussion tonight is with painter Arlene Buster. Arlene recognizes that in this era, there is a growing erosion of privacy. She depicts scenes of social dilemmas as if the viewer were looking into the situation through a surveillance technology. She uses her classical fine arts education to create these situations and then incorporates glitches and other technological nuances to push the narrative of surveillance. Additionally, I would like to introduce the host of our show, Will Scott. Will is an art historian with an extensive career as a photographer and is the former head of adult programs in the National Gallery of Art. He is uniquely qualified to bridge the gap between art and the public. And with that, I'll give it over to our host for tonight's Will Talk, Will. Okay, Paige, thank you for filling in for Marissa tonight. Um, you have done that before and done a wonderful job, so I appreciate your being available for tonight. Uh, but most of all, Arlene, uh, thanks uh, for being willing to participate in this. Uh, I think we've had a lot of success meeting new members and um, getting to learn about uh, their career and their work. First of all, just a little public service announcement. I hope everybody voted, regardless of who you voted for. I can't say to everyone that I hope you're happy with the outcome, but you know it is what it is and democracy moves along. <laughs> so uh, having said that, uh, Arlene, you are one of the more distant members of the MFA living in California. Can you just briefly tell us how you discovered the MFA and what prompted you to become a member? I became interested through call for entries, I think it's called, um, uh -huh. cafe, on the cafe website. And mm -hmm. so from there, you know, I, I found, you know, the contest and all that, and I applied and it was really interesting to look at. Well, good, good. I'm glad you found this and I'm glad you've uh, participated in our shows because I think your work is quite interesting. So Paige, will you pull up the first image, please? And then we'll, Arlene, we'll talk a little bit about your classical training. So an image like this visually to someone um, with my kind of training and background uh, does appear very, very classical but you are of course treating it, uh, your, your subject in a very contemporary way, taking up a very important uh, contemporary issue. Can you just briefly tell us all how you uh, prepared to be an artist and, and how long you've been working on your own work, but you know, exhibiting and, and hopefully selling and sharing your work? I graduated from Montclair State University in New Jersey with my a uh, Bachelor of Arts in Fine Arts. And then mm -hmm. later on, after my girls were older, I started going back to school for my MFA uh, at Academy of Art University. I really wanted to learn more of the classical way of painting. And so this, you know, this is how I began, you know, the whole process. And I, I encountered some illness in between and things just, you know, got a little crazy, but <laughs> yeah. I'm here. I'm painting. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, Montclair being in uh, North Jersey and having a very fine museum of its own, but being so uh, accessible, especially to New York City, but even to Philadelphia and Boston, uh, as a young person, did you go on your own or with your school or your family to the great art museums that are nearby? Uh, yeah, we went to a few and, you know, we took the girls to my daughter, our daughters when they were little. <laughs> and we did a lot of that around there, the Montclair Museum. And I think it's called the Montclair Art Museum. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. And, and yeah, we, we, we tried to go to a few of the museums out there in, in New York and all that. Well, great. Uh, that's just good to know that you had that kind of uh, early introduction to uh, the history of art. And this is an image that in many ways is, is a cliche uh, or a trope in the world of uh, traditional painting. A, a young woman, uh, semi-nude, uh, posed at a window, the window, the nude, the woman, all of these things are found repeatedly in the traditions of Western art uh, and even to some degree in non-Western art. But you're not, am I, being fair to you and saying you're not really trying to emulate 
that tradition of the female nude or the view through the window, you really have another point uh, to make in the series of works that we're looking at today, correct? Yeah. And my point is to bring awareness to the whole concept of surveillance and webcams being watched, you know, things like that. I think that's what you were asking or? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I see what you're doing as whether you're deliberately doing it, but to me, it fits right into that tradition. And, you know, we've got quite a few years, decades now, where people have become familiar with the uh, phrase, the male gaze, you know, for hundreds of years, most of the artists that were acclaimed and, and became famous were men, and they often painted uh, young female uh, nudes. Uh, and this idea of looking then, what I'm trying to say is part of the tradition of Western art and the whole notion of what it means to look at a subject, look at a person, look at a thing, uh, I think is something that is central to what you're doing. Can you explain your process? This began as a project in my, um, while doing my MFA and my process is a lot of research that I have done and do regarding instances where people have been uh, surveilled or, or seen through webcams and, you know, it's later on you find out about it, you know, for whatever reasons. And so that is how I start mostly with the research that I've done. And then I go on to think about ways that I can paint something that would bring awareness to it. The way that I do it is I, I for this one, I, I had the images from an, a photographer that took images and I chose which ones I wanted and I put it together with other images that I, you know, free images and stuff like that. And I put it together mm -hmm. the way that I wanted. And then after that, <laughs> I, I use a lot of Procreate too in the beginning stages. And then I go on to um, glitch the photo on, on an app uh, called Glitch. And I add the pixelation and some of the glitches. And, you know, then I work from there. Um, and I think about things that maybe I don't like this, the way that the glitch did it or not, or I want to mm -hmm. emphasize else so you know I can I can work with it um, but that's basically how I start my process it's all from research and stuff like that so each painting such as this one you have uh, had some prior decisions uh, conceptually that you've made I want a young woman uh, posed in an open window Here's what I think is very crucial to understand how uh, complete your control of the final image is though. You're not taking a photograph, yours or someone else's, and then making some kind of photo projection onto your canvas that you then draw or paint. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, so you have painted the entire surface yourself uh, do you make preparatory drawings in a traditional form? I have, and sometimes I have, I, I do that, but for these, I, you know, I, I uh, draw it onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. I think about what size I want to do and all that before, you know, even starting on a canvas. Like I, I think, you know, I have to cut the picture exactly how I want it and then you know, I divide it up, you know, I can use a, a grid sometime, a grid, mm -hmm. I draw it with a grid and parts of it, because sometimes it could get very confusing with the glitches and all that stuff. Yeah. So I have, yeah. you know. <laughs> so when I see this, when I first saw this image, of course, the woman is uh, directly engaging the viewer, uh, her gaze, gaze uh, immediately uh, calls attention to itself. And she's posed in a rather uh, relaxed and, um, you know, sort of realistic way. And she's attractive. She, she is conventionally attractive and semi-nude. Mm -hmm. Are you meaning 
to have someone like me look at it and notice her attractiveness uh, and then slowly discover the glitches and these bifurcations. There's, I guess there's at least two, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You've divided up the canvas. Mm -hmm. So what's the process that you are uh, hoping that the viewer experiences as they engage one of your paintings for the first time? I mean, she she is an attractive uh, woman and and all that. And it just like the image almost has to like speak to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, the model um, and the images that I choose, it has to speak to me. And somehow mm -hmm. this was very interesting. Um, the idea that someone from another house or another mm -hmm. building is watching her and you know, perhaps taking video of her. Yes. You know, looks out and she doesn't, she's not aware, I guess, but she is looking out. So it's a little tense, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, but, but that is the idea. Um, you know, it just, it, I guess it, I guess I just have to like feel comfortable and the image of the model because because the image of the model has to speak to me. And sometimes the reason I don't take my own images lately is because I find the photographers just take better images. <laughs> and so I, I do it that way. I purchase the images and I choose the one that I really, something about it speaks to me. And I thought this was really interesting, her gaze and you know, just sitting relaxed. When possible, when you're exhibiting your work, Mm -hmm. Would you do anything like have a small explanatory text? I ask this partly because I was in museum education and, you know, that was part of my job to do that for exhibition pieces. And I know how valuable it can be. If I were walking up to this image mm -hmm. and once I discovered the bifurcations and the, the pixelations, the glitches, uh, as you're calling them, I'm not sure that I would make the connection quickly to mm -hmm. the way that you're commenting on our pervasive surveillance culture. So I, I'm wondering, do you do anything to sort of give a clue or to point people uh, in that direction? Yeah, I, I would I would put like um, some kind of text with it. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. You know, the, the, the project started out as the absence of privacy. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would do it. I would write something. Yeah, yeah. Text well, let's look thing. at the next image and see how this is sort of uh, uh, pervades the whole series that you're creating or the whole body of work that you're creating. Mm -hmm. This one I think is even, everything that I said about the previous one, is even to me more forceful is this the same model by the way yeah yeah okay this one's so, 24 by 48 also oh okay so it's, <laughs> it's quite a bit bigger it's almost life size then mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and another subject i mean Degas. i think everybody who's uh participating this evening list uh watching and, and listening uh, is familiar with all of the many paintings that the God made of women in the bath and, and dancers preparing themselves. And it has become a point of intense discussion. Was he misogynistic in looking at women in these uh, moments when they're not aware they're being observed? And in this case, you've directed the model's gaze, the, the figure's gaze away, uh, so that that's a very plausible reading of it. Is there anything more that you are intending or unintentionally uh, injecting into the work other than this idea of surveillance pervading all of our moments of our days? Yeah, I mean, these, the one where it's the nudes, um, I, was, I was trying to convey the idea of hidden webcams in mm -hmm. places that you stay and the other one is the window, of course, but um, in in a home. But this one was like the the hidden camera, and she's just very sort of relaxed, drinking her coffee, not even knowing. Yeah. Kind of creepy, but in some ways. 
Well, but that's isn't that part of the whole reason for us to be concerned? It is creepy. It is creepy right. to know that we could be anywhere at any time, and modern technology allows somebody to be, yeah, you know, watching us, watching everything that we right. do. And and do we want that? And yeah. is that really the kind of thing that we want everyone to have? Is the the image, your image or your video of you? You know, yeah. so that yeah. that's the whole concept, yeah. Exactly. I think the mirror on the wall is also a very nice touch. Uh, the way that you position the elbow and the arm, the shoulder, uh, right. actually, I think helps draw attention to that mirror. And the mirror sort of makes, at least it makes me think, you know, now I am part of the image, even though I'm not seen. So I am complicit or participatory mm -hmm. or however you want to say it. So I think that's a brilliant touch. Uh, to have included that. Um, okay, uh, so <clears throat> in painting these two images of nudes or semi-nudes, mm -hmm. did you do a lot of figure work when you were uh, in your academic years or subsequently? Yes, I did a lot, a yeah. lot of figurative work. I, I enjoy figurative work. I just feel comfortable with it. And I just, I, I just love people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I appreciate coming from my point of view that you're doing this so well, but that you are, and this is the whole classical tradition of Western painting. You learn from studying past masters, mm -hmm. uh, but then you uh, use that skill and knowledge you have to make your own statement through your art. Uh, and I think that's uh, something that you should be very um, proud that you're able to do it in this way. I know it's quite, to me, it's quite impressive. Uh, let's look at the next image. <laughs> this one's just, uh, I love this. This is, do you mind if I say that it made me think immediately of Edward Hopper? Oh, no, no, not at all. I love Edward. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like a, a Hopper today. Hopper might do something like this, you know, your, your palette, mm -hmm. your subject. Uh, so how did this come about? Because I think this looks a little harder for me to uh, from our conversation to piece together how you created it. So maybe you could sort of dissect it uh, a little bit for us. Yeah, so what I did was um, we were in a cafe and that's my husband in the image and I used my iPad to take images, you know, without like just having my iPad up and somebody's taking <laughs> images. Mm -hmm. And that was the concept of it. And then I went and you know, I cropped it or, you know, whatever, and I glitched it and tried to make it a little bit like not noticeable which cafe it was or anything like that. So I tried to, I tried to capture like a moment of someone taking images of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we've all been in public places where mm -hmm. uh, we see someone taking images of someone else, whether they are aware of that or not, or they might even be taking images of us. And one time in New York down um, by the end of the High Line, the southern end of the High Line, I saw a guy who was all decked out like in the cliched professional street photographer outfit. And I started taking photos of him and he didn't <laughs> seem too pleased. <laughs> he, looked, he looked right into the camera and he clearly was not enjoying being my subject. Right. <laughs> uh, is are the uh, the three women I think is sitting on a banquet? Was that part of the scene, or did you bring that in from another source? No, that was part of the scene. It was in the cafe. Yeah. Okay, and then that um, abstract reddish uh, shape is that something seen in a mirror or through a window in the scene? Mm -hmm. No, that that is actually there. It's behind the three women. It's mm -hmm. on the wall or something. I think that was like some kind of map, you know, abstract map or something. Or it was a painting. I'm not sure. But that was that was there. Yeah. Well, you have a um, I think a good eye to recognize these kinds of uh, everyday situations. Have you ever painted them in a more photorealistic uh, manner? No, not not necessarily. Um, but you know, I, I like I said, I I just think about things that um, 
that that have happened to people you know yeah what's your take um if you care to share it with us about this kind of surveillance society or world that we seem to be creating uh is that something that you're uh warning us about or just asking us to think harder about it and not be so unconsciously accepting of it there's you know there's those two points <laughs> exactly as how i feel that i'm trying to bring awareness and also letting people know do you really want this yeah. do you really want people having images of you and something you know like i'm a very private person and the concept of people having images or mm -hmm. photographs or videos of you is just kind of weird <laughs> yeah. you know when you think about it because i think there's so much surveillance in our in our culture yeah um and everybody has a phone and you don't know when someone's recording you with your phone you know so that that is a very difficult thing that our i think it's uncontrollable now but it, i think people do need to be aware you yeah. know that that's my my i idea for doing the paintings because i think painting is like the avenue for bringing awareness to it yeah I, you know. um can we look at the next image please now before we talk about this one i think we've become pretty um uh familiar now with your process uh this one is a little more abstract and i think that uh, i want to ask you a question or two about that but have you had the opportunity to exhibit these works as a group? No, I haven't. I haven't. Do you, would you want to do that as a yeah. way of making a stronger statement? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I really would encourage you to look for that kind of opportunity because I think the cumulative impact, they're very engaging images, at least to me, to my eye, but the cumulative impact would be quite significant, I think. Now, yeah. is this is this your husband again, or is this just a yeah. person? Yeah, it's my husband again. And we were at a restaurant, and you know, I took I took the image because there have been instances where restaurants are recording you, and you don't know. Yeah, putting yeah. their workers, and so this that was the concept of this that you know they're they're videotaping you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of places that crimes are often solved because there's some kind of surveillance camera. So that's exactly. maybe the good side uh, right. of the surveillance culture. Let me ask you this. So far, we're seeing a very small sample of your work, but you are dealing with people, individuals who either are aware of what you're doing or are uh, like the female models. They have been posing. They know they're posing for someone else. Do you ever take photographs and then incorporate them in your paintings of people that you don't know and are not familiar to you? I, I know the group of, well, I, I'm guessing that the group of women in the previous image were there and they didn't, you didn't ask for their consent. Is that right? Well, isn't that a little ironic that you're investigating this social issue and making a, a very good point about it? but you've included somebody who didn't volunteer and say, hey, you know, I'm here, you can take my picture. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Um, yeah, that, I haven't done that because I just feel uncomfortable about mm -hmm. it. You know, as far as like people that I don't know <laughs> and then painting them and then, you know, one day they find themselves on there. I mean. It is an interesting concept because there was an instance where like in the Apple store, people would like, you know, do things on the computers. And then, you know, some artist had like a video of all these spaces that were recorded. Yeah. And it's just interesting, but you know, I haven't, I don't do it that way because I just feel uncomfortable yeah. without yeah. consent. Well, I think uh, this is just, this is just a very personal aside. Mm -hmm. uh, free advice even, you could say. I think sure. you are doing very interesting things with these images of people in cafes and in their rooms and such. I think if you, you might wanna think about whether you wanna do more of that in this series, but also just in a more straightforward way. 
Mm-hmm. You seem to have a, a nice sense for, for composition and structure and, you know, the, like your husband here, he's so absorbed in whatever it is, his, his iPhone or whatever he's doing there. You know, mm-hmm. you, you have something going there too. Although I understand the significance and the uh, importance of what you're doing with this subject about surveillance uh, society. Okay, uh, let's look at the uh, next image, please. I'm just going to let you explain that. I hacked into your webcam because I think that's such a provocative title. This one was from the Mac, uh, the Mac computer that I had from behind on the table behind there. It was my husband reading and this person doesn't, you know, basically he doesn't know that he's being filmed because someone hacked into their computer. Mm -hmm. And so they're watching him while he's quietly peacefully and alone reading a book. Is it fair to say that you might wonder whether we're ever alone anymore? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Just the way you explained it. I mean, that's popped right into my head. This is very interesting also to me in the palette. You know, you have so many different variations of blue and gray. Mm-hmm. Is color something that you're sensitive to, that you concentrate on? Definitely. This one, I wanted the blues to to give like a cold, mm-hmm. like a cold feeling in a very warm <laughs> setting, you know, where he's reading and he's yeah. just constantly, you know, there at the table. And so I wanted to add like the creepiness. I think blue and the gray sometimes add to the cold feeling of uh, technology, also yes. the fact that it's, you know, kind of creepy. Yeah, well, I think we've all had the experience. It's not so common now, I don't think, because the technology has improved. But remember when we started seeing a lot of digital images, they often had a kind of an odd bluish or grayish cast to them because the color sensors weren't very good yet. Well. You're you're really on to something here. And I uh, how many more images do we have, Paige? Do you... just one. Okay, let's let's go ahead and look at that one and then we can uh, perhaps talk a little more. <laughs> that, I really like this one. <laughs> I, I mean, there's so many things to think about it. So what do you think about it? Why why did you zoom in? I mean, in one sense, it's now self-evident. Um, you know, you chose a nice selection and uh, order for the presentation. But what do you think about when you look at this image now? This was a painting that I I wanted to to like express like webcams are in your face <laughs> kind yeah. of. Thing. Yeah, I'm um, looking at one right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I tried to do it, you know, as realistic as possible. And yet, I changed the color of it. You know, like yeah. red, like alarming. Yeah. And I just well, wanted. Focus in on it. Well, I, most of the webcams that I'm familiar with putting on my computer or seeing on other computers, you know, they're sort of elongated. But mm-hmm. this, did you actually have one that was shaped like this? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Because it looks more ominous. It looks more robotic. It looks more, um, you know, like a, a cyclops, a, you know, mechanical cyclops that is threatening, you know. So <laughs> anyway. Well, um, I really think your series is fascinating. And I wonder if you have, are you going to continue with this theme and continue to expand the series? Or do you have some other things in mind uh, for the future? Um, I'm, con- I'm going to continue with the series. I I found like my, I guess you say niche. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because I love exploring the concept of um, you know, using realistic, as realistic as possible, but also combining the electronic with it, mm-hmm. um, you know, the glitches and the pixelation. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just really enjoy doing this. And I think for now, that's what I, I will continue doing. Yeah. Well, I can imagine all kinds of ways that you can expand and vary it, um, you know, either leaning onto the technology or the kind of settings where these things do exist or threaten to exist uh, or perhaps exist and we aren't aware of it even. So it's a really fascinating series and a wonderful um, 
idea that you've gotten that uh, you're building upon here. So I, I think that's, uh, I've, I've explored the questions that I wanted to ask you about. Um, I wonder if our viewers and listeners have some questions or comments they want to uh, add. Uh, see, Catherine Page, you want to let Catherine in? Hi, I think I'm in. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, I just uh, was interested in the, the group of women that were unaware that they were going to be painted. Um, and I think, you know, it's a fascinating subject that you've taken up, but I think there are places where you have the expectation of being in public and you're not really protected. Whereas some of the other scenes where um, people were at home, people were in their bathroom or whatever, you know, there's an expectation of privacy there and it's been invaded. You know, in a, a cafe, we don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to make an observation because I, 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 um, I apologize, I joined late uh, and you had already started. So, um, but it immediately told me I'm being recorded. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, Catherine, thanks for your observations and your question. Anybody else uh, have something on their mind that they want to? Yeah. Yeah. This is Jim here. Uh, I want to know if there was a specific event that triggered your interest or your passion for this subject. Okay, Good so question, Jim. yeah, it is. It is. Um, what started this project was this painting um, of the webcam because um, I had an assignment for for a contemporary painting class, and it was a still life, and I was dreading it <laughs> because I I'm just still life is not my thing, but. I then found the webcam and after this, this just kind of opened it up for me. Um, and I said, wow, this is, this is something, I, I was so into this painting <laughs> um, when I was doing it that it just sparked that interest of, wow, we're being watched. And then, you know, it was around the times of, um, I forgot his name, Snowden and, mm -hmm a bunch of things that had happened in a school where they, they were given laptops and the kids were being watched at home and they found out later on. And so all these things were going on at the time. And it just, it just, I don't know, it just spoke to me and I said, you know, this is really important. And that was a while back um, when that happened, but you know, there was, you know, especially the instance with the kids and, and the, there was also Yahoo um, that had recorded people, you know, with all kinds of sexual images and stuff that people didn't know they were being filmed. And that was around the same time. I think it was around the same time, more or less, um, that that, you know, sparked my interest in, in it, because I thought, wow, this is, it's your privacy yeah and privacy is just uh, something i i treasured <laughs> but it, you know when 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 the internet you know started taking off it's just kind of weird because you start losing privacy yeah and then you find out your name address phone number is on the internet and you don't know why and so i think that so you know the internet has just opened up everything and technology for people to be viewed and it just it was something I was just really interested in. Arlene, I kind of have a follow-up question, I guess, to uh, uh, Jim's question. Do you take many pictures of your, uh, your children or your family and friends and do you ever post them on uh, the internet? I don't. I don't post them on the internet. Um, my, children, my girls, they're you know, women now, the, you know, but I was always like, don't post it, don't post uh -huh. those pictures, don't do this, don't, you know, yeah. they, they just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I take a lot of pictures of my grandchildren, especially when they play sports and do, you know, things like that where they are performing. But I still ask their parents for the permission to post the stuff. Um, but I, you're really on to something here that we all ought to be thinking about because it, if we don't think about it and have a position, it could be out of control. It could be out of control now, really, but it certainly could be shortly if we don't think about it. So you're actually doing something that I think is part of what is wonderful about art. It, in its own way, can comment on very profound subjects and make people think more deeply about. Okay, yep. any other questions, comments? I was going to say there was the, the um, there was also another um, philosopher. I forgot his name now. It's just like blanked out. But he talks about um, that our technology is moving so fast that we have to think about ways to protect. Um, you know ourselves from from technology and I just like blanked out with the name yeah that's all right um on that point though you've reminded me that 60 minutes uh, on sunday evening had one segment um a man who is studying the impact that um digital tech social media has on us mm -hmm. and the divisions that it's perhaps encouraged or exacerbated but I do think that's related to what you're thinking about and talking about. These digital media are changing us in fundamental ways that we're not always aware of. I have my hand up, I think. <laughs> Maurice here. My comment is not, uh, and my questions are not on the subject matter. Uh, the only painting in which you can see paint handling are the, the, the painting of the webcam. The other paintings, I, I don't know if I had the paintings in front of me, whether I would see paint handling or, or, or not. Uh, I think for how much you have in your uh, painting, you, it, they're very moderate size. And um, I'm going to give you uh, a, <laughs> a big compliment. Uh, when I looked at your, the paintings of your husband, um, I was reminded of Vermeer's paintings, OK? With quite a bit in them, very modest size, small or modest size. Yours are larger, but still quite modest size. So do, in the figurative paintings, do you go to make the paint handling itself hidden, unlike this one with the webcam, where at least I can see the paint handling in the background and also on some parts of the device. Yeah, I I haven't, um, I mean, I, I do, I guess it is more smooth rather than this other painting right here. Um, Sometimes I try to go for this, you know, I try different things as I paint um, and what, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I guess it's more smooth and um, you don't see as much of the paint strokes in the other ones, it's true. Um, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, something to think about. I, I yeah. noticed it, but I think Maurice has put a, a good point on um, asking the question. And making us think more about it. Uh, I think Jack uh, also wanted to add something. Jack, if you unmute yourself. I, I now have two questions. I, I'm, a, I'm a photographer. I don't know anything about painting other than walls of my house. Uh, what is paint handling? I don't know what that means. The brush stroke. Ah, okay. Um, uh, the question I have for you, Arlene, is the, the photographs you took of the nine model, the, 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 you had the first two or three pictures I think you took, of a woman, mm -hmm. um, 
that's somebody that you've either paid for or had some sort of an agreement for. The others are, are basically candid photographs that you took in uh, coffee shops or restaurants, which is private property, basically. I'm a street photographer. Um, mm -hmm. And I would, I, I just can't do that. I can't take photographs of people in inside of a, a business without the business's permission. If mm -hmm. somebody came up and said, that's my picture, that's a, that's a painting rather of me, and I don't want that portrayed to the public, would you take it down? Um, I don't know. Um, you know, it's, I mean, in in the image of like my husband in the cafe. That's different, that's um, family. <laughs> but the, the man eating a sandwich, for example. Yeah, yeah, my husband. Yeah. Oh, that was your husband also? Yeah, that was my husband. Okay. Those I those that I took, I you know, were my that's, husband. That's that's legit. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I, I I didn't recognize that as being your family. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's well, okay. I was doing my question, I have nothing. Your work, <laughs> your work is terrific. I really like it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, you're actually asking, I'm a photographer also, as you know, uh, but uh, that's one of those questions that we all have to think about if we're photographers and painters too, of course. But um, I think that I was trying to get that out uh, a little earlier. Maybe I didn't do a good job. And just, this is really just a sidebar conversation bet between me and Jack. So I apologize to the rest of you. The way I understand the, the, the law and the sort of, civility of what you and I might be doing. If I can stand in the street and take a picture of somebody inside, I will do that. I will personally do that. You're allowed if they to saw me doing it and they ran mm -hmm. out and said, you took my picture and I object, I would delete it. But on the other hand, I understand because I've kind of done a little research on this, that if, if some third party couldn't recognize that person, then you're still clear. But even even more to the point, Will, if you took that photograph and they came out and demanded that you delete it, uh -huh. you don't have to. No, you, I know I don't have to. You're, you're, you're legally not obligated to do it. I, I would do what you did. I, I don't want to upset anyone. That's exactly. not my, I just want to be able to take photographs. And if somebody's that upset about it, I'm done. Exactly. Uh, I, that's why I said civility. I think that's a, yeah. just a question that's of perfect uh, civility. Word. You know, being a, so the, the street guy. photograph of the guy behind me. Yeah. Is, is one of the guys that, that's not a street photograph. That's a, a fellow that I play golf with who's an avid gardener. And I said, Steve, the next time you are filthy, dirty, disgusting, covered in soil and are absolutely, your wife won't let you in the house until she hoses you down. I want to come over and take photographs. Yeah. So well, that's, that's, a, that's what I took. That's and, a great image. And, uh, just so you get an idea. It's, that's just a yeah. close up of him. Yeah. And that's, this is a guy that, that looks homeless, but I believe me, he's got a massive house. That's all I can tell you. He's, he's not <laughs> homeless at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Any was, anybody else want to um jump in? I was gonna Catherine, mention I think some say something else, Catherine. Uh, yes, I, I really appreciate the input of photographers because you deal with that whole issue of privacy in your photographs all the time yet mm -hmm. you know these webcams are not civil like you are you right. can't ask to be deleted you can't yeah. you don't even know that you're being recorded yeah so i i, I think the um the discussion about photography uh in public places really added to this whole discussion so well, thank, thank you Catherine. Indeed. Indeed. webcam is a different issue Catherine, because Generally speaking, they're there for, for safety reasons or protection of the, the, the business. Uh, except in London, where there every six feet is a camera. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, in the United States, it's there for to protect the business and, and whatnot. And those, those are deleted anyway. When a photographer takes your photograph, I can use that photograph for everything but commercial pur uh, purposes without yeah. your permission. Yeah. If I'm going to put it in an advertisement, then I need your permission. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been a good discussion. I mean, recently, I, I don't know whether we're covering things and the uh, artists are, are uh, answering that we're answering your questions as we go along. Um, but this is a very 
important topic and uh, uh, current concerns everybody. And I think we got a nice discussion today. So uh, most of all, Arlene, thank you for uh, sharing your work with us and participating. And Paige, thanks for your uh, technical support. And thanks to all of you for joining in. And uh, as you know, in about two weeks, this should be posted, uh, the link, and you can see it on our YouTube channel. So two weeks, uh, I think we have another very interesting artist who is concerned with uh, contemporary society and using his paintings to comment on that in his unique way. So I hope I'll see you all in two more weeks. But enjoy your evening. Thank you for uh, listening in tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, good night. Good night. Thank you.